Hey all you Minties, this is the Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And join me today as I take an advanced look at The Amazing Spider-Man by J. Michael Straczynski, Omnibus Volume 2 from Marvel Comics. So please stay tuned. And welcome back all you Minties. Now before I get started talking about the book, I want to give a huge shout out to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this book. The book is due out in stores on March 18th. That is places like CheapGraphicNovels.com, InStockTrades.com, and of course comic book stores. And then a couple months later in the Amazon and Barnes and Noble, Target, Walmart, wherever you get your Omnis. Now, let's talk a little bit about the book as this is the second volume. This is the direct follow-up to this omnibus right here, which had two covers. Now, What's interesting is that this volume is going to have a total of three covers. You have this cover right here, which is the Joe Quesada cover. Um, this is the variant cover. You have the standard edition cover, which is the one drawn by Mike Deodato Jr. And that one will be available everywhere, like Amazon and Barnes and & Nobles. And then you have the direct market cover, which is drawn by Ron Garney, the back in black cover. And that one will only be available at places like Cheap Graphic Novels and comic book stores. I'm not sure if this one will be available at Amazon or not, but um, I know it's a variant. Now let's take a closer look at it. So you have the cover here. This is, I'm assuming, what all the spines are going to look like, regardless of which cover you get. And rest assured, I will be talking about the flat spines and addressing that here in a little bit. Here is the back. The book retails for $125. And it has the contents of the book and all the covers that are issues in here. It's volume one and volume two. And here's what the spines will look like together. Now let's look at it without the dust jacket. Oh, nice. Okay. It's a Joe Quesada image. You have this image from one more day in here. It's the Joe Quesada image. Now let's get it opened. Okay. So let's get this opened. It's got those black book and pages. I believe that is Ron Garney, if I'm not mistaken. Here are, are the credits. Let's point out these folks right here that were able to make this book possible in collected edition. And for those that will be asking, this book was printed in Malaysia, just like the Wolverine and Black Widow book. Of course, all the talent that went into the individual issues over here. Cover art, Gary Frank. There's uh, Mike Deodato Jr. By the way, thank you to my... Brazilian fan base that told me how to properly pronounce Mike Deodato Jr. Figured with my Latin roots, I would have been able to pronounce his last name. Um, and one more thing I will say is let me know if you like the new lighting in here. One of the things, um, and thank you to our patrons for making this possible, um, I was able to get new lighting in here because I wasn't a fan of the glare that was coming down on the books. I want you all to get the best look at these books when I do these overviews. So we have a whole new lighting setup down here. Let me know if you like it or if you want me to go back to the original lighting setup that I had, but I think this one works better. Uh, it's a little more shadows and you can kind of tell uh, more of the artwork without that glare stopping you. Now I need to point out that I'm still in the first issue of the collection and the book can't lay flat. So. That is one thing I wanted to talk to you all about and address. I did talk to David about the new flat spines. I asked him if this was going to be the new standard, and he assured me that it's not. It is just a temporary printer they were using uh, to get some books out. Now, there probably will be a couple of more books coming out from this printer, but he wasn't sure which ones because they use multiple printers every single time. So that is one thing to keep in mind. So I did ask because I know that it bothered some of you all. And then some of you all were completely fine with the flat spine. Me, I pointed out the fact that there is a little bit of a gutter curve with these. So you lose a little bit of the artwork because we're used to books like this. This is the first volume with the curved spine. All right, so let's talk about the book. This is the second half of J. Michael Straczynski's run on Spider-Man, and it concludes his run when he was writing Amazing Spider-Man. And to me, I loved it, and I praise this run. It's one of my favorite runs. It's one of my favorite runs to introduce people to Spider-Man to. However, there are some downs. For example, Volume 1 of the Omnibus ended on one of the biggest downs, and that is since past. 
Again, not a review of the book, but I have to come forward to clear my name in case somebody's reading it and going, oh, this is awesome. And they get to a certain story and they're like, ah, what the hell, Omar, you said this was a great story. Um, and I'll address the one story here at the end in a minute. But for now, this collects Amazing Spider-Man 515 to 545. Remember, it got renumbered as of issue 500. So it went back to the original numbering system. It collects Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man 1 through 4, which is part of the other crossover event, Marvel Knights Spider-Man 19 through 22, and Sensational Spider-Man 41. Spider-Man, it has the other sketchbook in here, and then the One More Day sketchbook. So most of the art in here is Mike Del Dato Jr., um, all of it written by JMS, but also written by Peter David and Reggie Hudlin. Uh, the artwork, again, Mike Del Dato Jr., Ron Garney, and Joe Quesada, and the Mike Wieringo, who we love, and then Pat Lee, who I don't think I ever hide that I'm not the biggest fan of. Here's the wonderful Mike Deodato Jr. artwork. This is the crossover with the other, where this guy named Moreland is coming around and hunting Spider-Man down. Here's artwork by Mike Waringo, and here's artwork by Pat Lee. Pat Lee's known for the Transformers revamp for Dreamwave, and also not known for, uh, well, never mind. So during this omnibus, we have the story arc where Aunt May and, and Peter Parker and MJ's house gets blown up, they are forced to move in with the new Avengers, and that's actually pretty funny. During this time, Spider-Man was living with the new Avengers, so Aunt May has to get used to living, well, other way around. Wolverine has to get used to living with Aunt May. So it's pretty interesting, because Tony moves them into the new Avengers tower. And then we have the crossover event with the other, and that's where Moreland comes and hunts down Spider-Man. Like uh, He built this whole mythos in Volume 1, so it all comes to play here in the second volume. There is the event called... Civil War. I don't know if you've heard of this or not, but it's where Spider-Man gets a new costume built by Tony Stark himself. And it's interesting because one event leads into the other. Oh, we also have artwork here by Tyler Kirkman, who has a very Mark Silvestri kind of art style, like from Top Cow, like I think Mark Silvestri, Michael Turner, those guys. And then we go back to Ron Garney. So there is a big thing that happens in Civil War that... I'm not going to spoil for you something that happens to the character of Spider-Man, but you do know that it's hero versus hero, and that's kind of what it does. Here's a look at a splash page. Now, I'll go back and look at the splash pages here in a little bit to kind of show what they're like with this flat spine. And then the event of Civil War leads into something called Back in Black. Something makes something happens to one of Spider-Man's supporting cast members that forces him to wear the black costume again. And... There's a huge fight with the Kingpin. As a matter of fact, I do want to point out there's a splash page here. Now compare it. But anyway, oh, yes, this one here. I'll do a quick comparison too in a little bit. Now, that event leads into the elephant in the room I was talking about. And that is One More Day. It's a four issue crossover event written by JMS. <laughs> and I use that term very loosely and drawn by Joe Quesada. Uh, this was kind of Joe Quesada's idea, and he took a big gamble. And whether you know or not know what happens in this, it does reset the status quo of Spider-Man. After this, we get Brand New Day. And Brand New Day was a weekly series. Was it weekly or bi-weekly? I can't remember now. It came out so many years ago. Where different creators come in and write a Spider-Man story. And it worked out pretty good. But it does reset the status quo of Spider-Man for... The longest time actually he's still in that status quo now in present day as we speak here's the cover and regardless of how you feel about the story well regardless of how i feel about the story the artwork is still damn can joe quesada draw and i know that he is you know top dog at marvel but i wish he would just draw at least one comic story a year because I, I love his art style even without Jimmy Palmionti, like his art style is just so wicked. Um, so yes, this is a four-issue crossover that will forever change Spider-Man. And there are people that hate it, that stop reading Spider-Man. So I do have to throw that in there. And then there are people that are like, okay, yeah, we needed a change for Spider-Man. So look at those spider webs. Reminds me of Joe Kiss or um, Tom McFarlane. 
And there are people that are like, yeah, we need to reset Spider-Man. It's fine. I'm okay with the storyline, if, even if it doesn't make any sense. But I do want to just make sure to warn you all about this particular story. But if you were able to get through Sins Past, who knows? Maybe you'll enjoy this. Now, let's look at the extras. There is a wonderful afterword by Stan Lee. Like, praising Joe Quesada in his choice. When I met my Joe Quesada's brainchild, like, JMS didn't even want to have his name in the final issue. That's how much he argued against that storyline. But in the end, JMS did put his name on the final issue, and it was a Joe Quesada's plot, pretty much. But there's a little afterword by Stan Lee where he praises Joe Quesada for taking a gamble on such a big move. Now, let's look at one of my favorite things here, and I'm glad they gave it a full-page treatment, and that is the late Mike Wieringo's variant covers for the other issues. The other issues. That sounds so weird. The other crossover issues. There we go. That's better. By the way, this book has 1,136 pages. It's a big book. So here's all the variants that we have from the other storyline. We have lots of sketches, lots of other variants from One More Day. Uh, here's the sketchbook. This was originally released with the other oversized hardcover and trade paperback and One More Day. By the way, One More Day has never been released in oversized hardcover. So it's a big deal to have the complete JMS in OHC format or omnibus format or omniboo format. Here is... Oh, I love when they do this. So this, pretty much the sketch, the quick sketch, the pencils, and the inks. Yeah, man. Now, I'm not going to look through all of them, but just wanted to highlight some. Here's an article on JMS and his six-year stint writing Amazing Spider-Man and what he added to the character and what changed throughout those years. We have some wizard covers. And, oh, we don't have the Ron Garney DM variant here. Nor the Mike Deodato Jr. Standard Edition cover. They usually put those in the back. So it looks like we're going to have to buy all three copies. As we get here towards the back, you see that it's a little difficult for the book to stay open, right? It's not horrible. It's not a rat trap like we've seen from um, other books. But towards the beginning and the end, it doesn't lay flat. Like we're, we're used to the Marvel standard, right? It is sewn binding. Now, one thing I do want to make clear is with all the Omnis that I get, whether they're review copies or whether they're my personal books, I always stretch out that spine. So you saw the video where I did that. I do that and I also read them. Like I, I go through the stories. I don't read every single one of the stories, but I do want to refresh my memory sometimes. So keep that in mind because this has had one read through. I did go through the whole thing because I did enjoy this run. So even though it's a flat spine, you still have this kind of big eye now the problem with my copy is and i don't know if every copy will be like that is that because of that eye because i stretched it out it won't stay shut now to me that's not a big issue because i put this book in the end in a bookshelf where it fits between other books but i can see that sometimes bothering some people so i wanted to make sure i didn't leave anything out not as big as they used to be and that's why we get a little bit of the glutter curves that you know may bother some people to me i don't know i'll be honest it's not that big of a deal i've seen a lot worse maybe because i've been reading these damn things for 14 years now and i've gone through the best and worst of times so let's let me point out a couple of splash pages so i don't leave anything out for purposes of this comparison i don't have another omnibus that has this artwork in it but i do have an oversized hardcover uh, that is the back in black volume one came out over a decade ago so keep that in mind as i show this comparison down here is the omnibus volume two and up here is the said oversized hardcover that is having a hard time staying opened now again i want to point out that yes of course you can see a lot more of the artwork here because the book itself is also thinner this book is 1136 pages um, so you do lose just a little bit of the artwork with this gutter curve that I mentioned in other videos and I'm mentioning again because of that flat spine you don't have a flex in the inner and outer spine you only have it in the inner spine and that's what's causing this I just want to make sure you all see it to me not a deal breaker but I understand everybody's different 
Now, one other thing I will be asked is, hey, Omar, with this omnibus, I can finally get rid of my oversized hardcovers. It does contain everything that's in this oversized hardcover. However, it does not contain everything in the Civil War oversized hardcover because this has Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. It also has Sensational Spider-Man and then the Marvel Knight Spider-Man stuff. So that none of that is in here. As well as these two books. It only contains the Amazing Spider-Man back in black stuff. Not the Friendly Neighborhood or Sensational Spider-Man. And then, uh, I believe it was at Annual Number 1 and then, of course, the Marvel Knight stuff. None of that is in here. So if you're OCD about having every single story in oversized format, keep these and this. But yes, feel free to give this to a cousin, a friend, whatever. Okay, for the sake of this quick comparison, I'll be using the Civil War oversized hardcover compared to the Omnibus Volume 2. Again, with the Omnibus, there's a little bit of artwork that's lost within that gutter. It's not very much, it's very minimal, but I just wanted to point that out, as opposed to this OHC. Of course, the OHC, this one has been read a few times, too. That's another thing to keep in mind. I only read this one time and relaxed the spine, so keep that in mind. And when this book comes out on March 18th, you can get it from CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content of the book, the page count, and the build of this particular volume. Let me know in the comments down below which cover you're going to get. If you've never read this series, if you're going into it blind, if this is your first read through, if you've only heard rumors about One More Day and you can't wait to see what it's like, I'd love to know all those comments. And if you have any more questions, leave those comments down below. I hope I was able to answer all the ones about the flat spines and like I mentioned, it's only a temporary thing. So let me know if they even bothered you to begin with. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, notifications button to let you know when our videos are going live. Join us on Patreon and on Redbubble if you can do so. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.